Hello and welcome to Universe Inbox 2. So I have a very quick suggestion just saying what will happen to our planets after the sun goes through a red giant phase. Well, let's find out. Okay, so how are we going to do this? I think we might be able to get away with just increasing the age of the sun to 15, what is this, giga years? It says G years, I think giga years. Mm, no, that didn't seem to do anything. I believe that's, uh, yeah, it's a value of billion. Yeah, that didn't seem to do anything, so doing that's not going to do anything. Uh, how are we going to get a remnant here? We need it to go through a red giant stage and then turn into a white dwarf so we can actually see what happens to the planets once it actually turns into a white dwarf. So we might be able to do this by making a supernova, perhaps? Let's just blow up the sun real quick. And no, there is actually no remnant from that, and it's probably just evaporating all the planets away. So, supernova is not a good choice. There's Earth now equivalent to 11.3 moons. And it's probably burning away. No. Oh. It actually survived that weirdly enough. Okay, how are we gonna do this? I think there's actually a simulation for uh, the lifespan of the sun. Um, ah, stellar evolution of the sun. So this one I think is just a scripted one, which goes through its age until it gets to about 13 billion years, I think, something like that. And then, yeah, it's turning into a red giant right now, and it turned into a remnant. And the remnant, which did not update weirdly enough, is 567 Jupiters in mass. So we're just going to go ahead and copy that value, reopen the default simulation, and let's go ahead and change the sun to that, to that mass and just see what happens to the planets. So that should be the size of the white dwarf that's going to happen. Did that just go supernova? Oh, I just changed it to 567 suns. Yeah, I don't think we want a supernova. Oh, I made a black hole. Interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go to mass here, change it to Jupiter. Let's go ahead and slow down time a little bit. Oh, so it's roughly about half of its current mass. And 567. There we go, it's actually a red dwarf now it's not even I thought it was actually just gonna turn into a gas giant okay so let's go ahead and see what happens to the planets rotation now let's see what their orbital patterns are if they completely escape the system or if they're just going to very eccentric orbit I think mercury is gonna manage Mars is currently crossing past with Earth. Mercury, Mercury still remains. Very cool. It doesn't look like anything's really escaping the system. It just looks like uh, everything is just kind of gained in a central orbit. I can't say anything for these asteroids, but I don't think they're really too important. Other than a lot of them might become some crazy comets or something. I'm gonna go ahead and just clear out these asteroids real quick. So let's go ahead and delete all particles and dust. Leaving only dwarf planets, large asteroids, and planets. So it looks like we've had nothing really escape except for these uh, small dwarf planets way out here. They seem to keep going. I don't think they're actually curving back around. So yeah, doing some uh, time lapsing, it looks like a lot of this has actually escaped the solar system, but a few of these larger dwarf planets out here actually still remain, which is pretty cool. As for the fate of our current solar system, it looks like Neptune is way out here. This is the uh, distance on that? What's the semi-major axis currently? 217 astronomical units, that is very far away. Which means right there is probably upwards of like 250. 
The same could be said for Uranus. It's currently 88 astronomical units away. For the record, Pluto, I believe, currently sits at like 37 astronomical units. So that's an idea of how far that is. Earth is currently sitting out where Pluto, nor or not Pluto, uh, Jupiter usually orbits. Mercury is still orbiting rather close. But it is a much cooler planet. It doesn't even go into the positive temperatures, even at the uh, closer point of its orbit. Venus is also relatively cool because, well, the sun is, in this case, a red dwarf. When normally it'd be a white dwarf, but the mass is still the same. So I think everything is just going to basically freeze over. The white dwarf would be initially hot, but then it would cool down over time. What about Saturn? Saturn is pretty far out here as well. It's out here at 35 astronomical units. So it orbits basically where Pluto usually orbits, but with a very, very centric orbit. Looks like it really gained an in inclination. Interesting. So, it's basically as you would probably predict would happen when the sun loses a lot of mass. A few things look like they have fully escaped the solar system, but a lot of it looks like it is just, uh... Actually gotten very, very eccentric orbits. Not really too much else to say here, other than... A quick, little fun experiment. Anyways, if you guys liked the video, please subscribe, and until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.